Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So one of the most popular add-ons in the Blender market right now is Random Flow. Random Flow is a tool that you can use in order to create randomized geometry in your Blender models. Um, it's very helpful for sci-fi modeling, other things like that. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about five things in Random Flow that you can use in order to get amazing geometry inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so by the way, I will link to Random Flow in the notes below this video if you wanna go download it. But, um, so tip one. So first off, when you're working with random flow, you wanna make sure that you've got some detail to your geometry, right? So if I look at this right now, right, these planes all look the same. However, if I was to run random flow, and we're just gonna do a random loop extrude right now. So remember, you can come in here and you can select this in order to set a number of loops. But notice how right now, um, if I try to do that, I'm not actually getting a very good result. Right, So the reason I'm not getting a very good result is because this piece of geometry right here, and I'm gonna get rid of these extra layers that this created, but this piece of geometry right here actually doesn't have any detail to it, right? There's no like subdivisions or anything like that. Well, the problem with that is that means that when we run random flow, originally what it's doing is it's just adding a single surface on top of this, right? So you can see how it added a second surface on top of this, but it didn't really add that detail that we see in those cool images or anything like that. So let's say though that we were to take the second plane right here, tab into edit mode, notice how I've subdivided this. Well, if I run random flow on this, so I'm gonna do a shift Q and do a random loop extrude. Now, if I select this, notice how I'm getting a little bit better result, but my result still isn't very good, right? And the reason my result isn't very good is because we're missing an important setting inside of a random flow that's going to affect the way that our final result comes through. So. Let's go back to our original surface right here. We're gonna do a shift Q, random loop extrude. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna select multiple loops, right? Cause we want this to come through and this to add multiple pieces of geometry, but we also wanna add some subdivision. So if I add subdivision in here, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna subdivide my surface. So if I bump this up, notice how I'm getting this object subdivided at the first level on my surface right here. And I can adjust the seed in order to adjust where those are placed. But in general, that subdivision is adding that additional detail inside of Blender. Well, if we add another subdivision at the lower level like this, so let's say I add a subdivision right here, notice how now this is subdividing those, um, those cubes or those panels that are being created into smaller panels. So if I was to add another subdivision right here, notice how I'm starting to get a better result in here. And you can kind of play around with the randomization in here um, in order to get different results. Um, notice how if you change the seed on any of these, um, that's definitely going to adjust. You can also adjust how many objects get um, looped and then extruded by adjusting this value right here. So if I was to bump this up to like 150, notice how it's gonna look different than if I put it at 10. So um, just kind of play around with these settings a little bit. One thing that might help you though, is I think you're gonna get a better result if you start with geometry that already has some detail in here. So now if I run this, and I was to run random loop extrude with this subdivision in here, notice how there's more geometry for this to work with. And so I can get a better result in there by working with that subdivided geometry. So if we were to do this one right here that has even more subdivisions in it, so I'm just gonna tab into edit mode, do an A to select all, and then do a shift Q. Now, notice how this one is gonna give me even better results because it had more geometry in here, right? So you can use this in order to quickly get different results inside of Blender, but the amount of base geometry that you have in your object is going to affect your final result. And then you can kind of fine tune that by adjusting your subdivisions over here, right? So I could adjust this down if I wanted a little bit less subdivisions in here, or I could adjust this up if I wanted more subdivisions in here. Just be careful because the more subdivisions you add, um, your performance is going to struggle a little bit more. All right, so second of all, and I'm not sure when this was added, but there's now a function in here that's gonna allow you to mirror results. Meaning, if you want the same kind of result all the way around this object, what you could do is you could select a quarter of the object like this, but then what I could do is I could go down and select the option for auto mirror. So I'm just gonna do a shift Q 
to activate the tool, click on auto mirror. It's gonna allow me to pick the area, which in this case, I'm just gonna click on this object, but notice how I can set this by typing X, Y, or Z if things are going to be mirrored. So let's say, for example, that we wanted our result to be mirrored on the X and Y axes. We can just set this and then hit the enter key. Notice what that does is that just basically adds a mirror modifier to your object. But now what that means is that means when I run random flow, it's going to work on this little surface right here. But when I run it, so let's say we were to create some random panels this time. So I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Notice how those panels are now being mirrored across my object. So we can use this in order to create more of a symmetrical object in here where those panels just kind of continue along. And that's gonna work for really any of the tools I believe inside of Random Flow. Um, but yeah, you can use that in order to get this kind of like symmetrical mirrored result. And so you can, if you wanna make this mirror along another axis, you can come in here and select the geometry that's created and you can just toggle on the different axes. So if you wanna turn these on or off, you can do that by going into the mirror modifier that it creates. All right, so next tip, and I'm not 100% sure how long this tool has been in here, it might've gotten added in one of the new versions, but you can now add different bolts and screws to add detail to an object. So let's say for example, that we were to select, um, we'll go with this panel right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and select some of the surfaces in here. Um, so for example, let's go with kind of a top down right here. But we're just gonna select a few of these surfaces. And you can select as many of these as you want, but now if I tab back into object mode and do a shift Q and do a random, we want, or, and do a panel screws, what that's gonna do is that's gonna generate screws on this object. And notice how they're not showing up. If you just do a little drag right here um, and adjust one of these values, it'll make this show up. But notice what that's going to do is that's going to randomly place, or that's going to place screws on some of your surfaces in here. And so you can adjust this. So you can, you can adjust how far out this goes as well as adjusting things like your depth using these values right here. But you can also adjust if those screws have a bevel on them. So, um, and you can kind of see this. I don't want to zoom in because I'm going to lose my window. But if you adjust that bevel up, notice how you get kind of a different screw result than if you just give it a little bit of bevel like this. So you can use this in order to place panel screws that are in here. Notice how if you adjust things like your selection boundary. So if you turn off selection boundary, what it's going to do is it's just going to kind of generate those screws everywhere. Um, so you could do that selecting um, whatever surfaces you wanted in here um, to put screws on all of them, or you could use this angle threshold. And so what the angle threshold is going to do is it's going to basically, it's basically going to figure out um, kind of the boundary angle threshold. So this one, for example, basically what it's doing is... Um, and I'm not 100% sure how the math works, but it's basically looking at the vertical angle or the vertex angle in here of your selection. And it's basically placing those at the corners. So notice how you can use this in order to quickly place these at kind of the corners of your selection if you decide that you wanna do that. So let's say for example, that we were to tab in here and just select like this surface right here, right? And then do a shift Q, do the same thing. And we're gonna adjust that threshold down, but notice how now it's placing those bolts at the four corners of that selection that we had in here. So you can use that in order to place those bolts um, or screws in here really fast. All right, so the next tool I wanna to talk, to, talk about just for a second is the scatter function. So we're gonna tab in here. We're just gonna select this surface right here, but I'm gonna do a shift Q and do a random scatter. So what a random scatter is going to do is it's gonna come in here and it's gonna randomly scatter either a cube or if you give it like a mesh or a collection, it can randomly scatter that as well. But notice how you can do use this in order to randomly scatter things along the surface. And then you can also set like the minimum or maximum size of those objects. Again, remember that you can specify a more complex mesh or collection, but you can control other things too, like the seed um, of the randomization, as well as things like your scale. So let's say for example, you wanted these to be more like narrow in one direction, you can adjust the scale by doing this. You can also give that a little bit of randomization in here and adjust that seed as well. But you can use this in order to randomly adjust things like your rotation and other things like that, as well as the number of objects that are created in here. Um, the cluster function in here is really interesting because it'll take these and it'll actually like cluster them together. So you could use this to create like collections of skyscrapers or other things like that um, just by using 
these functions right here. So you can use this in order to randomly scatter your objects on your surfaces in order to generate kind of some of those more interesting results. So one other interesting function in random flow is you can tab into edit mode and let's go ahead and we're gonna select um, the bottoms of our surfaces in here. So I'm just gonna go into wireframe mode and we'll just go to a front on view and we're just gonna select the bottoms of our surfaces like this. But what you can do is we'll go back into, we'll go to solid mode. But if I tab back into object mode and do a shift Q, there's now a tool in here that allows you to add random cables. And so what the random cables is going to do, we're gonna adjust this right here, is it allows you to select surfaces and it's going to generate random cables based on those surfaces. Notice how you can do things like adjusting your slack in here so you can set your minimum maximum slack um, as well as kind of the seed in here the way that this is being randomized you can also adjust the size of the cables that are generated right here so 0.01 actually seems to be working pretty well but this allows you to really quickly add those different cables to your surfaces if you decide that you want to create a scene that requires those different cables so this tool actually contains a fantastic tool set for creating objects with randomization i will link to some other tutorials on how to use this on this page as well as linking to the add-on itself on this page as well but leave a comment below let me know if you have any questions as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys